Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to episode one of the new Haulo TV show. Or at least what should have been episode one of the new Haulu TV show. Haulu! <laughs> yes, it was very nice. Uh, we actually had uh, some sort of story that moved and did things. And also, there was no Quan. Uh, a silver lining, to be sure. <laughs> Like, oh no. Seriously, this should have been episode one of the show. Because you start by seeing a planet that's gotten glass by the Covenant. So you're okay. You, you've got your characters here. The aliens are invading. The aliens are doing bad alien shit. Right, right, okay. And these are our characters. You've got Black Captain McKees. You've got Indian Woman. I, I, I do hate that accent. And you've got Master Chief, like, voila, there you have, you have the heroes, you have the villains easily presented, and then you move on from there, like, we must, we must counterattack them, they're burning our planets. Okay, cool, we've got all of the motivations we need there. Instead, this is episode eight. And the war has finally arrived in some shape or form. Yep. And d d make no mistake, the episode finds a way to screw this up. Because the beginning's like, wow, that's kind of the right idea of what you're going for with Halo. And then like, well, hold on. We have this arc where we're going to focus on the fact that humans are evil and completely forget about the genocide that happened. It's like, oh, God, here we go again. Got to go down the, the humanity is actually evil because of that one garbage planet, which we looked up wasn't a garbage planet, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we quickly return to that. So um, now that Quan has been unceremoniously dumped to the sideline once again, we have McKee and Master Chief walking through uh, Japan, apparently, with the cherry blossoms everywhere. And uh, the way this show does the story is so goddamn horrible because last episode <laughs> or not last no, that was the quan episode but the episode before the quan episode we were like can we trust this strange woman that fell from the sky probably not but you know they're gonna interrogate her gonna talk to her see what they can learn now they're completely on board oh no she's definitely on the side of the enemy oh she's evil you see because she too can see the haulo yes and this in turn makes them trust her more <laughs> rather than less, which is brilliant. Don't worry about that. <laughs> oh, see, we had a brief discussion about this, but the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that you're kind of right about the whole her her them knowing like the UNSC specifically knowing that she's she's working for the Covenant because they have that whole moment where like she's a traitor, she's a traitor. And then like, oh, John says she's not a traitor. Like, but how did you know she was a traitor, though? What was it? What was it that convinced you? Yeah, it's suspicious, but we don't have concrete proof. And they're like, traitor, traitor, traitor. And then John says, like, no, let's give her a chance. And like, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, their entire worldview flips like three times. First, they're like, well, this is suspicious, but I guess it could happen. To no, she's definitely evil. To John going, like, let's trust her. And like, okay, have her touch the artifact. And like, oh, kiddo, okay, kiddo. Okay, okay. And then simultaneously, when John gets betrayed and ambushed by his his brother and sisters, um, again they go like, oh no, now she's evil. I know. God damn it. <laughs> Despite the fact that she's spilling the beans on everything, too. She's, like, going on her way to help. It's like, okay, like, let's worry about that later. But right now, we have a bigger problem. We've got Dr. Halsey doing a weird coup d'etat thing where she's trying to, you know, take John and the artifact and or the McKee or whatever. But they're too, like... The, of course, the characters are so, like, tunnel vision. It's painful. It's like, oh... We just found out that uh, Halsey's doing a coup thing. Oh, and McKee's telling us and helping us and being an actual asset in regards to revealing all this information to us. Oh, wait, McKee might be evil? We better, better, better start torturing her in the middle of uh, all of this. Quick, shove this unarmed girl to the ground and start tasing her repeatedly so that she has PTSD from that incident where she got tased as a child. That way she can... Realize it's it's oh my goodness that if way she can turn Lord again. Like, 
She can turn again. It's like it's the Gollum moment. Remember when Gollum felt like he was betrayed at the falls, but because the Rangers captured him by Frodo, and that's when he's like, Frodo isn't actually nice. He's actually evil because he betrayed me. I trusted you. You know that whole thing. This is this is them doing that in Halo. I think McKee switched sides like three separate times in this episode. Because yeah, first, weird. first she has the uh, the whole Hawulu moment with Chief, and then Chief comes to her uh, her house and goes like, "Sergeant, I know you've been ordered by literal high command to watch this door, but uh, go away." And he's like, oh, "Okay." Go yep. The best part is the reason for that is so that uh, he can he can bang her. Yes, and then Master Chief enters the <laughs> cell and mind breaks her in the best Japanese style to make her loyal to humanity, which is great. Um, He's like, <laughs> give, give him a taste of that master cock, you know. <laughs> uh, then Miranda Keys uh, holographically shows herself to her on a really terrible home entertainment system, which looks like it would be a really, really awful home entertainment system, and it goes, hold on, you must help me. Humanity is actually bad, you see. And then she's thinking about it like, okay, you make a lot of sense. And then she says, but we could be like gods. It's like, oh my god, you're just like the Covenant. And then she turns off the projector, projector again and goes running to John. And then she is fleeing from the other two Spartans, runs into fat Indian chick and race swapped uh, captain dude. And it's like, oh my god, uh, uh, scientist woman, rebellion, re, re, re. And then there's like, woman, we can't trust you. Zap her guard, zap her now. It's like, wee. And she turns tired and she turns side again. She's like, I trusted humanity. I like how I, I, I trusted how you. I, zap, zap. I, I, I feel like the arc for this is going to be like, John, she's going to blame John for this somehow, which is going to be even better. It's like, I trusted John, but because this person I didn't trust zapped me, therefore John is wrong. And I, <laughs> I'm not going to like John anymore. Like, hell, even her relationship with John is based on one walk in the park, which Indian Chick yep. actually points out, and one good dicking. Like, oh, this this is a this is a foundation to build trust upon. All right. Now think about it. She hasn't had any human contact. That was her first and only dicking. That's true. And according to Cartana, <laughs> it was apparently a a great dicking. They were in in synchrono synchronicity as well. Yep, like their hormones were peaked. Like, it was the best dickin' sh that Chief has ever gotten. Wait, no. Maybe yes. he didn't get dicked. You know what I mean? Or I hope not. <laughs> you never know. Indeed, the way, dicking was, uh, was so good that she decided to tear out her own nail afterwards. The little weapon nail thing. Oh, uh, yeah. And the, what's with the shows, like, nowadays where they have to, like, oh, there's, like, this thing and they gotta tear it out of their body and it's gonna be, like, super grotesque and extremely painful like this show has an obsession with it the eye the killing of the the clone the ripping of the thing out of their spine the ripping of this girl's fingernail out. what is like it's just scene after scene of just misery porn it's like what is going on here well somebody needs something to fap to poorly veiled fetish i think i mean this all culminates in uh, Miranda Keys going like, well, I'm going to have to betray humanity as well. Darnation. Uh, Spartans, you're you're in a rebellion now because you can't trust High Command, you see. Oh, okay. Well, if you say so, oh. mother. Aussie Keys. All these keys are getting confusing, I know. Aussie Keys, I don't care. Women. Women. Many women. Oh, no, her last name is Keys. Aussie Keys. Now you're confusing me. It's Halsey. Halsey it's Halsey. Keys. No, don't say Keys. No! <laughs> You're doing it to me! But Dr. Woman wants to escape. Dr. Woman, because uh, Ray Swapped Keys is like, I've fueled up your uh, aircraft because I expect you're going to make a, a dashing prison break or something. He's like, oh, thank you, Ray Swap. And that is exactly what she does. The uh, the two other Spartans who haven't removed their, uh, their egg rotors of course, obey her command, except for Gun Grease, who's like, hold on, this is awfully suspicious. My comms are down. Is, is this is this fine? It's like, then they beat the shit out of her because, you know, she's asking too many questions. Which, to be fair, you know, she was kind of asking for it. But the, That's uh, only fair. The best <laughs> part of this entire scene is like, okay, Halsey 
crashes all communications across the entire oh, yeah. base. A massive military complex with God only knows how many thousands of soldiers. Not a single one is like, huh, my cell phone doesn't work anymore. That's weird. I'm not going to tell anyone. They, they spend so much time, and the, the big reveal when Keys is like, like, he looks at the camera, it's like, huh. I think the comms are down. <laughs> I just burst out laughing. It's like they've been down. Like they've been complaining about it going like something's not right. I can't get a hold of anybody. And then like after about like five minutes of worth of confusion scenes and the, the you know, the coup happening, like I think the comms are down. Like it's some of the most brain dead statements ever. It's like, oh, yeah, it's you think brilliant. they are really like <laughs> Captain Ray Swap tries his fancy little future tech sci-fi cell phone. And he's like, I can't get through to anyone. Indian woman, I can't get through. Like, try the god cell phone. And Charlie tries the god <laughs> cell phone. And he still can't get through. And after having tried two cell phones, he's finally like, hold on. I think the comms are down. This is like a parody movie at this point. And nobody, it is. nobody hits the alarm. Not a single solitary soul. Again, this is a massive military complex. There's going to be communications going back and forth constantly. The internet is going to be yep. up. Data centers are going to be up. Networks are going to be up. No one cares. And then all of a sudden, those communications are severed. But don't worry. Because the, the best part about this story, the writers are so inept. Because when you're writing a story, you have a bunch of characters with a bunch of plot lines. This is something this episode demonstrated really well. Uh, you, a character should always be active in the story relatively. Like, they should be doing something or there should be a reason why they're not doing anything. In this show, a lot of the characters just sit around, mope around while the other characters are doing things. And then they become active when the writer remembers they exist, like Quan. You know? This episode kind of shows that in the sense that all the characters are super super active for a change but at the same time they're not like the captain keys guy where race captain's race swap as he called him like he just sits there inactive until the plot demands him to be active as a character in the story like it's super really just like novice level writing because like no we can't have all the characters be active otherwise i'd have to think about how this would actually play out because it it wouldn't they wouldn't be as easy as they're making it for this coup thing to take place. Uh it's painful, isn't it? At least we got a fight scene out of it. At, at least we got a fight scene. And I'll give them credit for, for one thing too. Because they have a uh, gun grease hair woman um, engage in some some betting with the soldiers around the base where she's seen lifting uh, stupid heavy things. And this is there to be like, oh, yeah, the Spartans, by the way, basically rip off Space Marines pretty strong. And this establishes that she is actually pretty strong and can destroy a concrete pillar that she was uh, you know, tied to or chained to later on. Like, that, that was actually pretty neat because, well, they're not making this show for people who give a shit about Halo, so it's useful to tell them that Spartans are strong. They're not rip-off Space Marines, Arch. I already have these writers attacking Halo. I don't need you doing it, too. <laughs> What's that, Adeptus Halo? Get out of here with your Warhammer Plagicus. That's all that is anyways. Now, this episode was by far the most interesting, and I say, I say the word fun loosely, because for once, the story moves, and it doesn't just waffle endlessly it's like wow we're going somewhere granted it's still a bad episode the story is still bad but at least the story is moving but that's only because the next episode is the last episode in this goddamn season yes they, they have <laughs> was wasted so much time and again if this was episode one like make this a double episode a uh, a one hour or 30 minute special right for the the opening scene right you do everything you do here and then you toss in a little bit of the other character, a little bit more character development, you know, just toss in um, Miranda Keys going high haywire and being replaced by her her daughter and blah 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 blah. A little bit extra, and this could be a pretty damn good first episode. Instead, yeah. this was episode eight where they were suddenly like, God damn it. 
They need to be on the Halo in like five minutes. What do we do? No. Oh. The thing is, the season's probably going to end with them getting to the Halo or seeing it, and then it's going to be like, now you want season two because we bait we baited you for so long about for the Halo woo, and you're going to get the Halo woo next next season. Don't worry, this show has already been renewed because of backroom deals, but I wow. very much don't believe it will get another season after the the one that was promised beforehand. It was bought for two seasons initially, regardless. So. Mm -hmm. This show is awful. It's not a very good show, but with, with a little bit of rewriting and basically getting rid of all of the other characters, at least it could look like something. See, the, the Spartans too, the other two Spartans, the actually good Spartans, they listen to, um, listen to their, their mummy, because mummy's telling them that High Command is evil now and they, they need to obey her. Okay, fair enough. And then they, they have this scene where they're aiming at Master Chief and going like, take the shot, take the shot, says Spartan number two. Spartan number one's doubting. It's like, oh, God, but should I do? Maybe, maybe Master Chief is not actually the bad guy. And the problem here is they've been offered, they've been off offered, ordered specifically to take John alive. Like, there, there is no shooting John here. There's no shooting yep. John from a, like, this is the same problem with that goddamn Snow, um, Jon Snow problem from Game of Thrones. We're like, oh my god, they killed Jon Snow. Yeah, but he can't. He, he, lit, he he's literally just gonna can't be dead. kill Jon he's Snow. Like, he's a plot-centric character. He can't be dead. Yes. And in the same vein that, like, the cliffhanger thing with, like, Jon being dead thing, or like, oh, don't shoot him. Like, it's Jon. Like, the stakes aren't high, a show. In order for the stakes to be high, you have to like make me believe something John cares about is at risk, or something on the table that you know is actually tangible, like I don't know, McKee or something. And but they've already kind of thrown that one out the window. They've tried this like three or four times now. Because first it's Quan, where Master Chief is like, "Kill the little, kill the little Asian woman." He's like, "Don't want to kill the Asian woman though," and then goes haywire for a little bit because you know he wasn't going to kill the little Asian woman. And then there's Quan pointing a gun at Sorn, and he's like, "Yeah, she's she's not going to kill Sorn." In fact, then he shows up at his asteroid base magically in the next goddamn scene. And now they're doing it again. It's like, yeah, you can't shoot Master Chief. Like, he's literally... Like, excuse me, Pablo Schreiber. You can't shoot Pablo Schreiber. He's literally the main character. Like, stop it with these pointless cliffhangers. Yeah. But they, they have to do that so that you're interested in the next episode. Like, what happened to them, you know? We can't have it just end normally because otherwise you wouldn't care. Must raise the stakes as high as we can. Problem with doing that, when you constantly raise the stakes and nothing happens, is all of a sudden, anytime the stakes are raised, you're never at all, you don't care. Like, like we are now. Like, there's no reason to be worried because we kind of already know what's going to happen in episode 9. John's going to be fine, and they're going to get to the Halo. And then he's going to face off against uh, his... Uh... Is waifu McKee, and there's going to be an argument where Cortana's going to be like, I'm John's wife now. No, I'm John's wife now. No, I'm... And they'll have an argument like that. It'll be fantastic. It'll be a I do like fight. how, at the beginning, when, when we first saw McKee and, like, John interact, like, I just fucking nailed it on the head. I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna fuck. Like, it was unavoidable. It. It's like... <laughs> they're gonna... There was that was the no, weirdest thing. There though. was no reason to introduce a human covenant female. Like, there, there exists no plot relevant reason for this character to exist other than being a receptacle for Pablo Schreiber's penis. Pretty much. And to try to use her as well because her entire arc is actually there to to help undermine humanity yet again because the show has an obs obsession with and this is the problem with modern halo writing too where it it's focused on anti-humanity often to to an almost annoying degree where it's like oh yeah but you know because that one thing you did, Halsey, is pretty fucked up. All the children, but like, humanity, I say, like, no, it doesn't matter. And they've got to have the human interconflict because the human covenant war is over. In the same vein, the human covenant war is raging now, but yet they're treating it like the the modern Halo writing, where it's like it's highly focused on interdrama between different, you know, human elements, and it's just 
it detracts from the greater like vision that is Halo. And the problem too is it's it's all centered around the human conflict. Like that is the crux. That is what moves the plot around. And this is one of the key um, differences between good like Asian kaiju movies, massive monster movies, and the Western interpretation. If you look at um, the modern day Western Godzillas, almost all of the plot revolves around the character's relationship to Godzilla, to their families, uh, what their motivations are, etc. And the monsters are just something that happens in the background, kind of. It's, it's a thing that exists out in the middle distance somewhere. And the characters are trying to deal as much with their own bullshit as they are trying to deal with the monster. Whereas in uh, Shin Gojira, the Japanese version, everything is about Godzilla. Godzilla is the only concern on their mind. Every conversation revolves around Godzilla. Every plot point revolves around Godzilla. Every action revolves around Godzilla because he's the fucking plot. In this case, you've got yep. the same thing. The plot of Halo is the Human Covenant War. And yet we've... So far, okay, Human Covenant conflict in this TV show was the attack on the stupid-ass oil drilling platform in Episode 1. The attack... Water drilling, but yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Heavy water isn't water, you, you puppet. Oil drilling platform in Episode it. 1. And then the attack on the Gladius frigate with the cruiser. Uh, there you go, that, that was engagement number two. And then that fight where they fought over the triangle, the bigger triangle. That was fight number mm -hmm. three. So we've had three combat encounters with the Covenant in this whole TV show. If you want to be, like, super like focused on the covenant the next one would be the worst one which is the flashback from a key where the covenant just throws some guards around <laughs> yeah but uh, i i put that up at the same level as uh, what they showed in this episode which was basically like oh something terrible happened somewhere that you don't know about with two characters you have no relationship with we like okay like, the this was once a city, it's been melted down and shit. It's like, okay, you know what? That's fine and fair for an introductionary scene. But this isn't the introduction. This is episode eight again. See, what the writers are doing with that scene is they're trying to be like, oh, tensions are, you know, the, the human covenant war is boiling up. It, it, look, the plant, these planets uh, were attacked and wiped out by the covenant. But the problem is, is the show just keeps... Like, it immediately, in this episode, drifted away from the Human Covenant War almost instantly and went straight for Halsey's little little plot thing where she's trying to manipulate John. And she, I'm the only one who's in John's life, except McKee, who, you know, banged John, and I'm jealous. It's like, oh my god. Again. It's quite, quite horrific. That's the issue. The Human Covenant War is a side plot in the Halo episode, in the Halo TV show. And that's that that is the the reason why this show is just not Halo. Now that and the fact that they don't adhere to canon. Um so what's the purpose? Like that's also something I never understood, right? Because they said in the beginning of the show it's like, oh it's not based on the canon. This so was like, okay, then why is it called Halo then? Like it's not Halo. This show is not Halo in the slightest. Any no one I don't think a single soul will tell you that this show is Halo. Even the people that do defend the show are like, well, if you pretend it's not Halo, it's okay. It's like, no, it's still garbage. But it's not Halo in the slightest. It has nothing to do with the core themes, the core plot. Like, it's a background element at best. Not to mention Chief is, like, having sexual relationships with characters and doing all sorts of things that he really never did because of how he was engineered as a, as a human being or how that how his, the Spartan training program affected him. Like, he doesn't have the same kind of a relationships a normal human has. But this show did everything out of, in uh, in its power to tear down Master Chief's character and put up Pablo Schreiber's character instead. I also want to point out, remember when Soren was like, Hey, hey uh, black friend Spartan dude, I thought we were chemically castrated and shit. How did you have a child? And he's like, I just believed in myself. <laughs> See, that's dumb. That's, like, there is, that's what there... Pablo Schreiber did. He believed in himself and he got an erection. 
because chemical castration, like, it, it isn't a reliable thing, because sometimes people do have kids anyways, even if they're going to go castrated. It happens. It happens, uh, surprisingly more than you'd think. But, it's one of those things where it's like, the reason for it wasn't the fact that, oh, you know, it just, you know, they missed a tube, or they, they didn't quite do it right, or like it, what it normally is. It's the power of my, my belief. I believed, and therefore it, it did. It's like, okay. That's not quite, quite how that works, but all right. <laughs> he believed in himself, and therefore erection happened. But the thing is, like, can Spartan... See, this is the Space Marine problem. Again, Halo is basically a subpar ripoff of 40k, but... Do We're Space Marines get boners? That's the question here. That is literally Spartans? the question. Do Spartans get boners? I'm not going to go off the book lore or the comics or any of the other extended media because those go into modern times, but I'm going to go off to the video game lore and no, not really. Not not the... Not anything before the Spartan 4s, I'd say. But the Spartan 4s, one three. of the upgrade uh, elements of the Spartan 4 was the ability to, to pop a boner, was it? Well, it's not that they're an upgrade. It's that uh, anyone can kind of become a Spartan 4, which is in the new lore, but they're they're basically little bottom bitches. They're nowhere near as good as, uh, like, Spartan 2s in the slightest. There you go. Because the old ones are better. The power of erections. That's probably just a thing that the writers forgot about. Like, hold on, can Pablo even have an erection? Pablo just sits in the corner like, don't know. But just because you're castrated doesn't mean you can't get it up. It just means that uh, when, when you know, the gun fires, it just fires blanks. Oh, that's very much so it depends on the castration. That's true. I mean, unless they lop the whole thing off. Well, not that just. <laughs> they, they've been messing with his internal biological chemistry. Like, they've messed with his, his body's internal chemistry. They've built, messed with this, mm -hmm. the structures of his muscles, etc. Like, I mean, I'm, no, you I'm raise presuming an question that there, yeah. the castration wasn't a point in and of itself. Like, they didn't go like, all right, we'll give them super strength, the ability to hold their breath really long, and we'll pot chop off their penis. <laughs> Why don't? Because, because I want to. Yeah, snip, snip. <laughs> so, <laughs> consider it a feature, not a bug. <laughs> I consider it as be What are this, Bethesda now? <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm assuming that the... PP soft part was a side effect of the Spartan program rather than a uh, a point in and of itself. Constance is like, I I've don't... never thought about this. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not entirely wrong. I don't. And by the way, the answer is no. Space Marine PP can no go hard. Space Marines don't care about PP. Yeah. They don't. But you know what else the Spartans don't care about? This show. Because there's no real Spartans in this show. I'm, I've convinced myself of that. In fact, there's no anything in this show that's of Halo. It just has a... It's basically plagiarism is how I look at it. <laughs> but on the bright side, at least there can be some funny moments. Like when we noticed the little cleft in Pablo Schreiber's enormous schnauzer. And we were like, that looks a little bit like a butthole on his face. Like, yeah... And now I've come up with another one. Let's assume that the Spartans do, in get, do indeed have PP hard moments. Okay, this means that the Spartans barracked in a tiny sterile room with flat beds, no screens or nothing. <laughs> there will have been a moment where, where Pablo Schreiber and other Spartan person were sat opposite each other, just furiously jerking off in their own little universe. That's quite, uh, I didn't really need that scene in my head, to be honest with you. It's like, can we rewind and, uh, pretend this didn't happen? <laughs> I mean, Chief, I'm maintaining combat readiness, I see. This is canon oh. now. This happened. I'm calling it. <laughs> this is canon now. Because, I mean, to be fair, we've called most of the things in the show our entire friend group has. Like, the show just is, like... It's very predictable. <laughs> if PP function, then male biologically designed to make PP uh, produce occasionally. There you go. Same for the females. Oh god, there might have been an actual circle jerk in this show. Ah, <laughs> Arch is going on a tangent about circle jerking. Hey, don't look at me, Kyle. This is your universe. <laughs> 
In my Why? universe, it's There's... written into lore that this doesn't happen, okay? The Arch, this is the core fundamental problem with your blonde little self. You're like, I can only have one. Meanwhile, I'm like, I can like Star Trek, I can like Halo, I can like Warhammer, I can like whatever I want. And it doesn't really matter. Barge is like, I must only like one. If I like the other one, the one I like might get jealous. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> well, Kyle. It's not how that works. <laughs> you can uh, You can like more than one thing. You can keep Halo. I've I've seen Halo now. You can keep I it. can keep Halo. I've got the MCC on my PC. I can play it right now if I want to, but uh, we got a we got a job to do today, so to speak. Oh well, at least it'll be over soon. That is episode 8. We've got just one more left, and at least it's kind of promising to be an action-oriented one, because, frankly, at this you point, hope. how many more excuses could there possibly be to not show up at the goddamn Halo? Hey, Willow. Hey, Willow. If, if the show, I, you know, the only thing that'll surprise me is if the next episode they don't arrive to the ring. That would surprise me in a very negative way. I'd be like, you didn't even do it. You didn't even follow through, you little asshole. <laughs> they just chill in space. Maybe they maybe They're they like, see it from like a porthole or something. Like, out there, somewhere, is a Hawulu. Better yet, they, they, they look at each other and like, maybe the real Hawulu was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> they turn back. 